Hey all this is Nick from Flesh Eating Zipper. If you saw my previous video, and you didn't, you'd know this was coming. But there wasn't much stopping me from, again, acquiring and playing the best real-time strategy game of all time, Rise of Nations. Admittedly, it's been a few years since I've played it, so there was probably some nostalgia at play in giving it such a grandiose title. But, in the eight years since it's released, it's held up incredibly well, and is still quite deserving of its crown. To understand Rise of Nations' origins, we need to step back to the early 90s when a spunky Brian Reynolds was working at Microprose. Founder and gaming god Sid Meier was so impressed by his work that he brought him on to design Civilization 2, and after they departed to form Firaxis, its quote quote spiritual successor Alpha Centauri as well. Both were crazy successful. Real-time strategy games, or RTSs, were getting pretty popular in the late 90s and Brian Reynolds left Firaxis to form big huge games so that he could take Civ-style gameplay from turn-based, I-go-you-go gameplay to something far more kinetic. The result is 2003's Rise of Nations, an epic strategy game that went on to critical and commercial success. It's odd then that the game is so damn hard to acquire these days. Like most of Microsoft's older games, it seems doomed for the realm of obscurity. Of course, unless it has a huge Halo or Fable logo emblazoned on it. Like Civilization, or even Age of Empires, you start with a theater of action and pick a civilization, each with different perks. The top level of the game is a turn-based risk-style board game in which you set out to conquer or be conquered. While the base game features a classic world map, the expansion features colonial America, feudal Europe, etc. It's here that you reinforce territories, play good old-fashioned diplomacy with other factions, and set forth your military machine. Capturing capitals grants you the entire empire, so land grabs are encouraged. The core game, spilling out in real time, is amazing. Unlike other RTS games, your cities are strongly emphasized. Not only are they capturable, but their economic importance converts them into strategic choke points. Let's look at two huge portions of the game, economy and warfare. In other RTS games, specific build orders are required to get the best units available, but here, with a plethora of resources to grab, your job is to manage your economic loop. Let me show you. Food comes from farms, of which you can have five per town. Need more food? You're gonna need more towns. Trees, stone, and later oil come from their respective mines, but unlike other games, these resources aren't finite pits. Instead, you're rewarded for optimal placement and ensuring you have enough villagers to keep them manned. Gold is acquired by having caravans run between these cities, so again, the more cities the better. Of course, all of this is kept in check by your research. As you expand, you'll eventually run into commerce and population caps and need to research your way out of them. Research is yet another resource handled by having a university in each city and stocking them up with scholars. It's an immense juggling act that's also incredibly rewarding. All in all, it's about keeping the flow going rather than moving from resource pit to resource pit. This leads to warfare. You have an amazing selection of units that change and upgrade through the eras. There are no quick and dirty sorties here if you want to succeed. You need to build sizable forces to capture these strongholds. Victory relies on clever management of staging points. In keeping with the theme of a managed resource flow, your armies need to be replaced as they're depleted, leading to one of the greatest additions to a real-time strategy game ever, the Infinite Queue. Set up a military staging point, select a unit to build, and turn on that Infinite Queue option. So long as you have resources, that building will continue to churn out that unit. This is just as effective in building armies as it is sustaining your battles. In one match, I had to set up shop a stone's throw from the rival's capital, but we were in a stalemate for roughly half an hour. In another portion of the map, I had a barracks infinitely churn out javelineers toward a smaller enemy settlement. Not only did this distract the enemy's main army from their capital, but in time those javelineers captured the city. Without a steady economic engine and effectively managed staging points, any advance will choke. Units traveling through enemy territory without appropriate supply vehicles suffer attrition damage, so army management is paramount. As the campaign advances, so does history. Beginning in the humble ancient age, you work tier by tier through the centuries until you reach the wham bam thank you ma'am modern era. The game plays differently in simpler times than in more complex ones, bringing oil, airplanes, and tanks. Each campaign match allows you to advance to the next historical age, which, if managed correctly, can grant you an epic advantage with next-gen weaponry and perks, and that might be enough to get you to begin your military campaign. The final age grants you nuclear weapons, setting off an Armageddon clock. Reach zero, and the match ends for both of you, proving that the only winning move is not to play. As you conquer the world, you accumulate various nations' special resources, which are brought into each match. Cards are used to spice up matches and give you or your opponent an edge. 
To prevent players from going on all-out marches against the world, declaring war against another empire requires spending a tribute, which is not a liberally distributed resource. The game isn't without its faults, though. Almost 90% of your matches are capture the capital in 90 minutes affairs, while the more unique mission types are left for defensives or when you're conquering unaffiliated regions in the early game. The art direction is quality and sharp looking, but it wouldn't have hurt them to mix up the color palette as you progress through the ages. There are plenty of skirmish options, and a single Conquer the World tour can easily go for 10 to 15 hours. It's for all these reasons and more that Rise of Nations is the most intelligently conceived real-time strategy game of the past ever. No games have matched the scope and macro strategic gameplay that this game did, and it's a shame that neither Microsoft nor Big Huge Games ever followed it up with the next big thing. A fantasy-themed successor released three years later, but it just wasn't the same. Rise of Nations, we salute you. You are the best real-time strategy game ever created.